In this video, we're going to look at how to search Twitter. Now, we're using a service here called Tweet Archivist that is, allows you to not only search Twitter, but to download the search results into PDF or Excel, as well as to do some analytics on the search results. So this is the home page of Tweet Archivist, and here's a uh, link on how to search Twitter. Now, there's a lot more options than you may even realize were possible when you want to do uh, searches on Twitter. So we're going to go through some of these and explain what's happening here. And we've already done the searches, but to do a search, in fact, we'll just kick off the, our first one, is so you can see what it looks like, uh, is the, the term love. Now, when you search on just a single word, what's going to happen is that you'll get a lot more than just the word returning. So it, in this case, the tweet has the word love, but if the word is in um, a URL, or in this case, look at this, the word is in the person's Twitter handle, so that's going to come back. If the word is in a URL, it's going to come back as a search result. So the the just searching on so here's in this case look at this the word love is not in the person who tweeted but in the name of a person that's referenced in the tweet so it's really important to understand that just searching on a word will return users users within the tweet the word itself or URLs or hashtags so I don't know if there's one in here right now but if there's hashtag love that also gets returned into this archive. Now in this case we did a search called love hate and what this is is an and query. So this will search only tweets that have both the word love and the word hate. So you can definitely you can think of it as a boolean and. So we if you look at this tweet we have the word hate and we have the word love. Again we have the word love and the word hate. And this is also it will, if the word love was in a person's username or if the love was in a, in a, um, in a um, URL, it would match here. So this is how you do an AND query. You can also do an OR join. So if you do love OR, and the OR has to be capitalized, you will get either tweets that contain the word love or tweets that contain the word hate. So here we've got hate, here we've got love. So that's how you do an OR query. Now you can also do an exact match. So if you put your search in quotes, it will search for just when those words come together. So love hate here, love hate here, love hate, love hate, so that's how you do an exact match search, is if you put the term in quotes. You can also do exclusion searches. So in this case, this is saying I want to search for tweets with the word love that don't have the word hate in them. Isn't that nice? <laughs> we like love without hate. So that's what that syntax means. So if you want to exclude something, you put the minus sign in front of the words you want to exclude. And you can exclude multiple terms there. So you can combine these, these searches if you want. Now, this is a very, very common search, which is the hashtag. So once you put a hashtag in front of a term, it's only going to return tweets that have that specific hashtag in it. So as you can see, hashtag love, hashtag love, hashtag love. So that's how you if you're looking to track a hashtag because you're running a hashtag campaign or you want to see what, how that hashtag is getting used on different tweets, that's how you do that. Now another search you can do is if you want to get tweets just from a particular Twitter user. So if you want to create an archive of only tweets from the White House, you just do from colon the, the Twitter handle that you're interested in and you'll get only those tweets. Similarly, if you only want to get tweets that were sent to a particular user, 
you use the to syntax. So if somebody's trying to talk to the White House, which people often are, uh, and you want to see that, you do the, at, the to syntax. So to colon and the Twitter handle that you're trying to see. Now that's different than if you do simply the at symbol. So the difference is the to symbol will only show tweets that have that Twitter handle right at the very beginning when you're when you're trying to sort of communicate with that Twitter handle in the in the vocabulary of Twitter. Whereas the at symbol, any time that that Twitter handle appears in a tweet, it will come back. So you can see here this tweet returned because it has at White House in the tweet, as does this one. Whereas it would not have showed up in the other search because it didn't come at the start. And the final one we want to talk about is a filtering. So you can filter your search based on if the tweet contains a link or not. Link meaning a URL. So in this case, we're saying give us all tweets that have the term at White House in it, but only show us tweets that have URLs in them. Um, and this gets very interesting. In fact, what, what Tweet Archivist will do is then take that and if you look at the top URLs visualization, it will show you which URLs were shared the most. So here's a count of each of the URLs that were shared in that body of tweets and, and the number of times that they were shared. So that gives you a, an introduction or a, a tutorial on how to search Twitter. You can always go back and look at this how to search Twitter link uh, as a refresher for how to do this. And I would encourage you to check out Tweet Archivist. It will not only perform these searches, but once you activate an archive, you can then, um, the Tweet Archivist will monitor that term once an hour, updating it with the latest tweets on that search for the duration of your subscription. It will also continue to update each of the visualizations that get generated um, in association with that archive once an hour.